Hello, it is Sunday, November 6th, 2011, at 4.12 a.m. Central Daylight Time. And last night there was uh, an earthquake, another one in Oklahoma. It was a 5.6 and it occurred at 3.53 GMT time, which is 10.53 local time. And then we've had a few aftershocks since then. A 3.6 at 4.03, a 3.0 at 4.54, and a 4.0 at 9.39. I want to show you a few things related to this earthquake. Right after it happened, I was on um, Wonder Map and I recorded how it reacted to the earthquake. And this is the flash you see right here. This is at um, 1.13 p.m. Central Daylight Time. And then this image is at 11.43 p.m. Central Daylight Time. And I'll just let this play through a little bit and you can see that it's a loop, so every time it flashes, you're seeing it hit that same time. And I zoomed in on it here. It takes it a second to recover. Oh no, it looks like it did that pretty good. And also, I wanted to show you the jet stream at that at that point in time. Again, this this occurred by where the jet stream wa was. Uh, I've, I've got quite a few videos that you'll find references to the, the jet stream being involved with airplane crashes and earthquakes and um, severe weather type events. And Oklahoma's right here and Oklahoma City's about here. And this is at 11.6 at 000 GMT. And so the earthquake occurred at 3.53 GMT, so that it was four, uh, four hours later. So I'm going to go ahead and let this loop. It's probably going to go back and reload this frame, but we'll let it go through here. There we go, right there. So this is at 12 GMT. So it went from down here back up to here, so it was on the move to the northwest. It was down here and went up here, so I'll go ahead and let it loop again. Zero, zero, twelve. Let's loop, move our mouse. Let's start it over again. Zero, zero. I'm going to start it again. Zero, zero, twelve. And it looks like it's going to be hanging around for a while. I'll let it loop through one more time. Also, I went and looked at the Department of Atmospheric Sciences, the um, University of Utah, and this is the troposphere report. And what, the one we're looking at right now is the, I'll go over here and show you, Central USA Synoptic. And when you move your mouse over these numbers, it changes the screen, so that's why it's changing on me as I point to this. It's, it's going over here. Over here you've got letters A. That's Those are actual events. Um, F000 is at the point that, that I loaded this and that was at 11.06.00 GMT. So A6 is actual. That means you got to go back six hours from, from your F00 and then A12 is you go back 12 and then F006 is you're projecting six hours into the future, and then 12, you're projecting 12 hours into the future. So on A6, it was 10 hours before the earthquake, and 00 was four hours before the earthquake, and F06 was two hours after the earthquake. So looking at Oklahoma right here, we're going to go back to, here we go, 10 hours before, 4 hours before, and 2 hours after. Normally what I would find is that this dark blue area, see like this ridge over here, that that would also be 
located over the like if the jet streams running there that often that is in play also when something severe happens but that's not the case this time so I went and looked at the convective over here you've got a choice central USA there's convective and synoptic so I looked at the connect convective and the last one was tropospheric pressure and I'm not as familiar with these but I found this to be really interesting here because on another video I did relating to the earthquake last night Laughlin Air Force Base was um, lit up pretty pretty brightly and we had something happening right in here we're looking at the F00 here's six hours before F00 and then six hours later and I'm going to loop it back between those three I can't watch it and <laughs> but you'll notice that also when I'm in the next route I talked about in Colorado here there was a storm system that started and it moved up here and it was looping and out of Dodge City there was a little beam coming and hitting it and it's interesting that these little dots are right at that location and that this I also talked about Laughlin that this is is right in here this is the CAPE which stands for convective available potential energy as well as I think these um, isobars that's these lines here that is the CIN which is the convective inhibition now unfortunately I can't tell you any more than that but I just found that interesting that this was here and and let me run that loop back and forth a few times and you can go look at it yourself too you just run your mouse over these little numbers also down here the UVV that's what these little isobars are and that is upward vertical velocity and again I can't tell you any more than that but those are moving right through Oklahoma at that point in time so if I go back to the actual if, let's see I gotta go up a little bit in order to get to where I want to go there we go so this is 10 hours before, 4 hours after, and 2 hours after. I'll loop back and forth a couple times so you can see it. And also I wanted to talk to you about the seismograms that the University of Memphis puts out. And it's um, CERI, C-E-R-I, Center for Earthquake Research Information and I've been watching the New Madrid area because there were some plumes that showed up on November 1st and I did a video on them if you want to go look at them but there was a few of those that reacted quite a bit to this earthquake here's the one in Catron Mo let me put Google Earth up here this is Google Earth and here is New Madrid right here the red circle and I've got these little blue circles showing these locations that I'm going to talk about. So this is Catron. And let's see, right in here is where the earthquake started, 345 area. And then unfortunately it and the breast is on the next page, which I'll have to look at, so I'll have to open each one. So then it continues on down here. And you can see it's pretty severe and then Charter Oak and it starts up and then for some reason it went flat here it starts up again next page and then nothing which I found that to be interesting because it's right here let's see that's Matthews all these kind of all ran together. New Madrid. I think Charter Oaks, this one right here. Yeah. Well, oh, maybe not. They're all moving. Anyway, um, let's go to the next one. I'll get a memorized jet. 
here's Guam. Guam is right here. So this is what it looked like down in here. And you can see that it was actually acting up before the earthquake happened in Oklahoma. And here's the second page right here. And then we have Kiwani. And you can see right here too, it starts up, has a flat area and then goes. And then it's pretty severe, but then we had some going on earlier in the day too. Or the night. <laughs> and we'll go look at the next, pa next page. That thing keeps coming up. And you can see up here it's really severe. And then Matthews. Matthews is, I'm pretty sure Matthews is this one right here. Yeah. And it, it was acting up before too, before the earthquake started, because here's where the earthquake in Oklahoma started. You can see it here, got flat, and then it's pretty severe. And then continued on. These, for some reason, these tremors look a lot different than some of the other ones. Um, they start up, get nice and round, and then taper off. And for some reason that bothers me. <laughs> I, I guess I saw something in the past about a harmonic tremors that that um, it, it's a different kind of earthquake than if you get the really sharp spiky ones. The sharp spiky ones is a, a quick jolt. And it's, it's the harmonics that tell you something big is brewing. So anyway, I hope this was helpful and I pray that all is well in Oklahoma City. I really haven't heard yet. Um, God bless you and have a good day.